Hey guys, praise God. I missed it by a minute. 7.26, 7.27. Dang. I was doing some last minute note searching. And, uh, whoo, I said, man, it's 27. And boy, here it was. Praise God, don't miss the rapture. Don't miss that 7.26. Make sure you know you're saved, guys, okay? Uh, we, we have no reason not to believe that between tonight and tomorrow will be a rapture. There are so many things pointing to it. So many things pointing to it, man. And uh, we just want to point you to Jesus. Being saved equals being raptured. The rapture is just the third phase of that salvation, that free gift that we get when we believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Everything on the world scene, all is quiet, you know. But the big stir is up there with the Russians and their... Uh, accusations and their threats and you come in here to the to Ukraine we're gonna blow you away because what is the world without Russia if Russia ain't gonna be here the rest of you don't need to be either that's what the guy said today mother Russia the motherland and are you guys coming at, at us you know we are the world kind of thing and uh, so you know they're beating him war drums beating him down bang 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 and uh, here, here we find ourselves. We find ourselves on the eve of rapture. Everything pointing to it. Now, why do we say this? Why are we going off on this? Because God told us it's going to be a Pentecost spring rapture. Well, Pentecost started yesterday. The counts. So we're there. And also, we have just learned a couple weeks ago that Passover is a clue. And we're in the middle of Passover. Okay, Passover is today and ends tomorrow night. So today, tonight, it, it might be today in where you live on the West Coast, and it might be tomorrow on the East Coast. Okay, so this is everything's pointing to this, is what I'm saying. Everything is pointing to it. And we want you to know that you are saved, that you have been born again by the blood of Jesus Christ that you have placed your faith in Jesus. So many people hollering, repent of your sins, repent of your sins, repent of your sins. And that tells me that they don't even know what Jesus did on the cross. Because there are no sins to repent from. Jesus alleviated that. He annihilated sin, destroyed it all. It was burnt up in him. He suffered for them all already. <clears throat> So there's another issue at play here. Jesus has died for sin. There's no sin to repent from. What you got to do is believe that he became the burnt offering for your sin. That he took them away as far as the east is from the west. Will you believe that? Please, please be saved God's way. Once saved, always saved by faith. For by grace, that means free gift. For by free gift are you saved through faith. And it doesn't matter who you are. This free gift is for everybody. No matter how rich, poor, white, black, bond-free, male, female. It's for everybody who's human being. 100% human being. Jesus died for you and he became your sin already. And there is no sin issue. This is what you must believe. That Jesus, he who knew no sin, became our sin. And the Father judged him instead of us. That we might be made the righteousness of Jesus Christ in him. The great trade-off. He took our sins and when we believe that, his death, burial, and resurrection, he infuses us with his righteousness, the qualifier to get us to heaven. And not everybody's qualified. Nobody's qualified. Our, our default is hell. And the only thing that qualifies you is the point of your belief. The moment you believe and you place your faith in the truth, the fact, it becomes your truth, in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, he did all this for me to give me a free gift of salvation, eternal salvation, eternal security, once saved, always saved. Guys, if you're not once saved, always saved, you're lost. We are crying out to you. So many of you are trying to be saved the way you're supposed to be saved in the tribulation. And God's saying, okay, I'll, I'll let you get saved in the tribulation then. But your requirement in the tribulation, you're still going to have to believe that Jesus eradicated all your sin. Okay? He died for your sin already. If you would simply believe that on this side, you'll be saved. 
Place your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection, and he paid the price in full with his precious blood. Perfect blood. Sinless blood. And that was the requirement. Without the shedding of blood, there could be no forgiveness, and there was a ton of blood. He shed it all. All five liters of his blood was poured out for us that day in absolute agony and pain. Uh, we, we don't even know, but we will hear. Maybe tonight. Y'all ready to get raptured tonight? I'm ready. Amen. We believe, says Adrian. Amen. Howdy, says Rex. Today marks 24 days left. You know, like the 24 elders. Hello, I'm with you, Josh. Good point, bro. And so we want you saved. Be saved. You got to believe, guys. You can only be saved as a free gift. <clears throat> it belittles God. It enrages the Father for you to belittle the Son, to, to make it... Make it seem like you have something to do with your salvation. You can help God out when he went through that major suffering for you already. And he's already completed the task. It is finished. You got to believe that. And you got to believe that in your heart. And uh, man, you'll be saved. Whosoever believeth in Jesus Christ and what he did, his death, burial, and resurrection, his shed blood, you shall not perish in hell, but you shall have everlasting life in heaven. Amen. God made it to where you have to become like a child to get to heaven. You got to believe what he said and not come up with some theology. John Calvin and Wesleyans and the rest of them. Just believe the Bible, will you? Get saved. Believe. And then once you get saved, we want you to read the Bible. And we don't believe we have any time for that now. The bride. Uh, and there's going to be a famine of the word. They're going to be burning Bibles and getting rid of Bibles, and God will destroy a lot of the Bibles when he destroys this world. He's going to take the Bible from you because you didn't want it. That's what he said. So he's going to do that, and there's going to be a famine of the Word. And don't let there be a famine of the Word, guys, okay? Don't let that be you. And uh, be saved, and then get to reading the Bible. I can't even help God unsave me. Now, dude, that's a great point. Once you're saved, you're saved. Once you believe, he seals you. The Holy Spirit of God comes inside you, and he infuses you with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's what makes us qualifiers for heaven, belief. And then he does all the rest of the work. He does the front-end work, and he does the back-end work. He does it all. You believe. Amen? Great point, bro. Uh, Heather says, please support Sean. Please support Sean. This is his full-time job, and even if we get raptured tonight, maybe your money will be used to buy airplane tickets for the folks who survive and need to get back to Jerusalem, Tel Aviv. Amen? I believe Tel Aviv might be destroyed, and they just might be flying into the military airports. But get on that plane. If you ain't going to believe in Jesus now, you get to Jerusalem then as fast as you can. Amen? Aliyah. Brent says, I pray Jesus comes soon. We have custody of a four-pound, is that what that is? A four-pound grandson? Little dude? Wow. Uh, we believe he's coming tonight, Brent. We believe Jesus. I, I have no reason not to have the faith that he's not coming tonight. Now, after midnight, Central Standard Time, okay, just to give you a clue, we, we, think he's, we, we know they're going to destroy the coast in, at dark. Okay, we know the rapture is going to take place at dark. That was another one of our clues, at night. So we have that going. Amen, you're sealed and secure by the blood of Jesus Christ forever. Eternally redeemed. Redeemed means bought back. Jesus paid the price for us with his blood, and he claims us as his own. Eternally redeemed. Uh, every one of you who believe, you better believe. Amen. Ain't no work left to do now. It's time to go home. I believe, I believe Rex is onto something, guys. He told us, God told us, work while it's day, for the night is coming when no man can work. He's going to rapture the destroyed area, New York City. He's going to rapture that country, that continent, North America, during the nighttime, as an example. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go, says Adrian. I say, let's go. Let's go. God says, let's go. Come up hither. Amen. I mean, we're looking at some dates here. Why don't we look at an overlay of Moses? Since Sean is the overlay of Moses, why don't we look at that? Deuteronomy 34, God uh, will not let Moses go into the promised land because he smote the rock twice. The rock was a picture of Jesus, and Jesus died on the cross one time, and that's a picture of once saved, always saved. 
You don't have to go to Catholic Church and re-crucify him at Mass every week and eat his body and blood and re-crucify him afresh over and over and over. That's blasphemy. That's heresy. That is Satanism. Catholicism is Satanism. Folks, please believe me. Hear me when I say this. It's a, it's a, what we live is by faith. The just, those who are saved, live by faith. That Jesus has taken care of it all. And he destroyed that temple in 70 AD. He gave them 40 years to quit practicing their religion and they didn't. So he come and destroyed their temple. So they were forced to stop practicing their religion. And God wants them to believe. Uh, LA, Los, Los Angeles, that's his hometown, uh, doing secret nuke drills and New Jersey included in East Coast Tsunami Drill on Tuesday. Yep. Yeah, they, they, uh, New Jersey had a siren going off on the day of the Lord's resurrection. First fruits back there on the 26th when we had our last watch night. They had a tsunami siren going off and a voice talking. This is tsunami, tsunami. And dude's like, dude, what are they talking about? So we think they fired it off early, but they have to do that because they believe in karma. And in, involved in karma is they have to warn you. They can't kill you without warning you that they're going to kill you. So they make mistakes, quote unquote. Oh, we made a mistake. That, that siren didn't belong then, but they told you. And that's how they believe they get off the hook because they told you, man. Uh, God is perfect. I'm so thankful Jesus paid for all my sins in full. Hallelujah. Ain't that great? Ain't that, we don't have to worry about our sins, guys. The devil will come and accuse you and make you worry about your sins. But that's not Jesus. You got to learn to differentiate between the voice of the devil, the accuser of the brethren, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, the deliverer of the brethren. He freed us and whoever the sun sets free, man, you're free indeed, bro. Amen. No greater uh, life, love than to lay down one's life for another. Amen. That's so true. That's the greatest love is God taking our bullet for us. Jesus taking our guillotine. Jesus taking our cross. And that's what he did. We deserve to die on that excruciating cross. And Jesus took ours for us. Amen. He took our name down above his head and put up this is Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Amen. Aren't you thankful? All right. Back to Moses. Because we're at the time of Moses again. This is an overlay. Spiritual warfare strong these days with the enemy. Reminded me of my failures. Oh, he, oh yes, 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 yes. That's his specialty. His specialty is to bring, bring back all the stuff that we did that he saw us do. And he forgets. He wants us to forget because it, it's not true for him. It's not true for the devils and Satan himself that their sins be forgiven them forever. Jesus didn't die for devils. He didn't die for angels. He died for human beings. And our sins are gone, 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 gone. Yes, my sins are gone. Amen. Buried in the deepest sea. Yes, that's good enough for me. Amen. The little kids, we sing that. Now we shall live eternally. Praise God, my sins are G-O-N-E gone. Hallelujah. Teach the young'uns. The devil can't get in your head. Amen. That's what he does. And you fight back with scripture. You fight back with belief. I just want to see Jesus and know that, whew, all the children are out of here, out of this wicked place. Oh, glory to God. I like that. I love that. It's going to happen probably tonight, guys. Have your faith cranked for tonight. Why not? Let's, let's look at what we're going to look at here tonight, because this is going to be teaching us maybe because God works in pattern that he might do the same thing. So Moses struck the rock the second time and in fury, he says, must we fetch it out? And he forgot that it was God who was bringing forth the water. Okay. He was just the, the, the middle man. He was the guy with the stick and he had to beat it one time, picturing Jesus's being whipped, his being smitten, his being tortured, brutalized and dying on that cross. He died once and said, now, Moses, from now on, you just speak to the rock. And that was a picture of us and God. And the Catholics want to kill God every week. And the uh, everybody who forces you to do the Lord's Supper every week. Oh, you must do it to be saved. You know, the re-crucifying Christ afresh. You and I do it in remembrance of him. We do it in remembrance of the Bible, what the Bible said. Once saved, always saved, saved. Amen. Belief, belief, belief. That's how you're saved, guys. Please, please. You don't have seconds left. Okay, we believe the rapture very well could be tonight. Tonight and into to tomorrow. You know, while it's still dark, we believe it's going to be a, a dark time, a nighttime event. But tonight and tomorrow, 29th and the 30th, 
Today is the seventh day of unleavened bread. It just now began for us here, okay? There's the day of Passover and then the seven days of unleavened bread. And today is day seven. Day seven is when Israel was saved from the water. They were saved on the other side and Pharaoh and his bunch got eaten up on day seven. Also on God's calendar, it's Adar seven. Adar 7 was the day that we're going to talk about. It was the day that Moses was born and when Moses died on his 120th birthday. Today is that day. It's both days on their calendar and our calendar. Pretty interesting. Let's keep reading here. We're in Deuteronomy 34. And so Moses can't go into the promised land. God takes him up to Nebo, takes him to the highest point, Pisgah. Pisgah means the high place. Took him all the way up there and showed him, hey, that's where the tribe of Dan's going to be. That's where Nephtali is going to be. That's everywhere. And he showed him the land, and then he killed him and buried his body so nobody could find his body because people always want to worship things and not God. <clears throat> and they would have turned Moses into a relic and, and his tomb into a relic, his gravesite. So nobody knows where he's buried. And God said, you're never going to go into the promised land. Well, what about the Mount of Transfiguration? That's in Syria. Mount Hermon, that's in Syria. He still hadn't been into the promised land yet. Amen. But he will be. He will be. So why don't we begin reading here at verse 5. Deuteronomy 34, 5. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And God buried him in a valley in the land of Moab over against Beth Peor. But no man knows where his grave is, where his sepulcher is unto this day. And Moses was 120 years old. It was his birthday. Adar 7. He was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. The, we got to say these things because it's pointing to a rapture. It's a pointing to us going up. Okay? We, we got to have all these notes, these fine-tuned notes that nobody's listening to us about. By God's grace, Bondo will get this loaded, and 200 people will come across it and start it, and I don't know how many will finish it. I don't know how many will make it to this point where we're given two more points of interest on why we believe the rapture could very well happen tonight. 8R7, the birth and death of Moses, and the seventh day of Passover when the water event drowned the Egyptians and saved the Israelites. Okay? Vital points. Important points. Why we're sitting here in faith going, okay, 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 get it. Now we're about to add another point. Now, I don't know if this is a factual point for us, but I know it's a factual point for Moses because God tells us it is. Okay, let's look at it. Moses was, uh, verse 7, this is Deuteronomy 34, 7, and Moses was 120 years old when he died. He could still see great. His eye hadn't dimmed a bit, nor his natural force abated. He had a spring in his step. This boy had energy. It wasn't time for him to die, but it was time for him to die. And so God ended him on eight or seventh, guys. Please, please hear me. Verse eight. And the children of Israel wept for Moses. They cried for him. They mourn. You know, they have the time of mourning. In the plains of Moab, 30 days. I like that. Because if that's the case, we, we see 429 all the time and 529. If that's the case, we get raptured tonight and God wants to keep Sean and the other guy up in the clouds, up in heaven for 30 days, they come back on 529. Before June 13th, which we believe the tribulation must start by then. Now, I don't know if this world can handle 30 days without the glorified witnesses here, but God can do anything. And you and I believe that nothing's impossible with God. And he may cause natural events to happen to keep people in their place, to keep them from going too far, to kind of help keep them restrained of sorts, okay? But Moses dies on today, 8R7, 
He was born today on 8R7. They tried to hide him. They couldn't. And they put him in that little ark, sent him down the river, filled with crocodiles and piranha. And uh, the Lord saved him. And he was drawn out, Moses. And he was raised in the palace for 40 years. Then he went to the desert to grow in the Lord, to become a nothing, to become humbled, to become pliable in the hand of God. And then he led the children of Israel for 40 years, and it was time for him to die because he profaned God in the eyes of the people. There are so many pastors behind the pulpits who's doing that and have done that, and God's sick of it. And he's about to call us all home. According to the book of Enoch, 200 fallen angels, the watchers, they descended from heavenly realm on top of Mount Hermon, and they began their nefarious activity with the human women, and that's where the Nephilim of Genesis 6 came from. That is the mountain of transfiguration. It was a filthy mountain, a cursed mountain, and when God got there, Jesus, he touched it, he made it a holy mountain, and it's referred to as the holy mount. And that's where his glory shone, where once sinful wickedness had taken place, and the rebellion happened, and now there's Moses and Elijah himself, and then the three faithful ones in the inner circle, Peter, James, and John. Is that you? Are you a inner circle believer? Are you always ready to hear the message after the message and you're not ready to go home and do the buffet and watch the sports and the entertainment and take a nap? You'd rather be with Jesus? Is that you? Be that. Just arrived from work. Praise God, Evelyn. April 8th is the 99th day plus 21 days is April 29th. 120 happy days. Imagine that, guys. From the eclipse. April 8th. That was the 99th day itself, plus 21, makes it the 120th day today. I mean, come on, dude. Help me out here. Do you not see the patterns? Do you not see God at work? Do you not see him pointing with his finger? I do. And I'm going to have the faith to say, okay, Lord, I think you're pointing to a rapture. I think you're pointing to a going up. I think you're pointing to a water event. And I'm going to have the faith in that. Huge sign. Glory to God. So, Moses is buried by God, and the people mourn for him for 30 days. And that takes us from 429 to 529 when the boys come back. Amen? Could be possibly just write that in your notebook. Okay? All right. Praise God. All right. So Heather has got up, queued up some stuff we did from a year ago, I guess. Maybe not even that long back in September or something. Maybe a year and a half. And we're going to look at that. She's going to put it up here. All right. And so many things do point to tonight and tomorrow. We keep waiting no matter what. Amen? Amen? Amen. I will wait till 529, won't we? God's pointing to, to all these dates. And he said, he said, Pentecost, Passover. Pentecost, Passover. And Pentecost and Passover on the Jewish calendar, will still be going at second Passover. Amen? And that begins May 21st. May 21st. 21st to the 22nd. 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th. April 29th will end second Passover, and it will still be in the Pentecost counts. We will be in the new year, but God, he's cool with all that. He just told us to be looking out for Passover and Pentecost. Amen? And we are, ain't we? And we're there right now, so we're looking right now. Praise God. You don't ever overlook right now. Every, all these Bible guys and rapture guys, they're looking to the next thing. They're not even looking at right now. I've not seen anybody that said they're looking at right now. They've gone on to the 40th day. And we're going to be looking at that too, but you can't overlook the present. You, you can't pass first base getting to second. You'll be out. Even on a home run, you got to tag every base to make it home. I don't know why you can't just run to the dugout. I knocked it over the fence. Sweet. You got to tag every base, including home, to score on a home run. And so if we're going we're gonna to win that home run, we're going to win the prize. You can't overlook first base, the first 
segment to look at. And we did that the other day on the 26th, and here we are tonight, okay? And we'll be up tonight. I know a lot of you guys um, will have to get up and go to work tomorrow and just make it a matter of faith. If you believe that we can look for the Lord to come tonight and be encouraged, I tell you, every time I do this, the Lord gives me energy at work the next day. And I praise God for that. Uh, progressive revelation keeps us hungry and on the edge of our seats. Now, these Bible codes that we're going to look at, did you put that up, Heather, the first one? These Bible codes that we're going to look at, let's see here. I don't even know if I've got it up. Let me see. What did I send Heather? Let's go look at that. All right. Heather's notes. I'm going to click on that for myself. The first one we sent. Okay. This, guys, is taking us back. And she'll have that link up here. June 13th. She probably already does. June 13th. And Cush has the ELS here at 549223. Hmm. Very interesting numbers, right? All right. And this one was called, let's see, let me click on it and blow her up a little bit. This is vital, guys, because we saw, we went through this Bible study, and now since God has added unleavened bread to the mix, my goodness, that changes everything. It, it doesn't change it opposite, it just adds to it. And it's beautiful, it's wonderful, man. All right. Yeah, five, four. Okay, this is it. The key of the matrix. Okay? The key of the matrix, the key of the matrix, the key of the matrix is unleavened bread. That's the key. The key of the matrix is unleavened bread. Let's look at it. This is from June of last year. June 13th. Now, we know that this the tribulation must start by June 13th of this year, a year later from this Bible code. Okay? Let's look at it. Sean says, the number of terms in this table is very dense, so I isolated the most significant ones while keeping the pictograph of the key. And this thing has a pictograph of a key. You can see the key in it. Uh, and I think George, maybe down in these comments, drew a key. I remember him doing Yep, yep. George has a picture of the key down here in the comments. So you'll want to look at that and then his commentary on it. All right. So he says, it's clearly visible. You can see the key right beside the access term. Jesus Christ holds the key to the Bible code matrix. Jesus is the key. And he shares with us the key of the rapture, the key of his harpazo, the key of his calling his beautiful bride away in the spring, at Pentecost, Passover. Amen. And Jesus is the key and he un has unlocked this entire book. Remember, oh, uh, who was that singer? He Holds the Keys from way back in the 80s. Great song. All right, here's the translation that we're looking at. Click on that link so you can read it along with us and have it saved for, you know, look at it real good. The key of the matrix will be required for the light of the ephod. And Jesus is the key. The fire is the key. These words are the key. And he unlocked it with the computer. Okay, so now we have access to the Bible codes, and Sean, I mean, he just gets them to us, and now we have it, and Vondo has uh, updated the book, its latest version, to get it all right. Uh, a lady noticed a couple letters, uh, typoed or something, and Sean said, hey, we got them fixed. So just a little straighten up here and there, because Steve Green, Steve Green, he holds the keys. Amen. Jesus holds the keys, baby, and he holds, thanks for that, bro, and he holds the key to the matrix here. All right. So, uh, translation, the key of the matrix will be required for the light of the ephod. You got to have Jesus, man. You got to have the Holy Spirit of God. You got to have the man of God called by God to do this. Amen. That's Sean Mitchell. God's called him. All right. <sighs> the book of his hand. It is numerical. He sealed the secret of the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Feast of Weeks. Right there. Now we know what that's talking about. When they intersect. Today is day number two of counting the Omer in Pentecost. And it's day number seven of Unleavened Bread. And it's on God's calendar. It's 8 or 7, the day Moses was born and died. Everybody tracking? 
And then 30 days after that, they mourned him and then advanced. <laughs> Follow along, baby. Follow along. Praise God. The unleavened bread, and that's what he's highlighted over here in the yellow. You can see the highlights. The feast of unleavened bread. Bam. That is the key to it all. And we didn't understand that before until these other Bible codes came along and said, yeah, yeah, yeah. When is the feast of rapture? When is the feast of Harpazo? Oh, we already knew it was Pentecost, 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 Pentecost. And God said, and unleavened bread. But, yeah, unleavened bread, that's your key. That's your key to this particular table matrix is understanding unleavened bread. Praise God, it's right there in front of us, man. The secret, God don't have secrets. Well, who else knows that he's going to rapture us at unleavened bread and Pentecost when they're crossing each other, apexing? This was less than a year ago, and I didn't know it. I knew what the rest of it was talking about. I didn't know unleavened bread. I know that unleavened bread and tabernacles mirror each other now. I didn't know that before. I knew they were both eight days, but I didn't understand the mirroring of God. God loves mirrors. You know how... Moses, mirrors Moses, Mitchell. That kind of mirroring. Amen. And the Bible says, Sean looks like Moses. His DNA, he favors his great-great-granddaddy. DNA, baby. Genetics, baby. God's awesome. How come so many are in delusion? Because they don't love truth, Clay. God said, because you have not had a love for the love of the truth, Desiring Jesus, desiring his word. They love TV and sports and going on, carrying on with this event and that event and, and entertainment. Let's go to the movies. And they're always getting jacked up about everything but God because they live in a lie and they don't love truth because Jesus is truth. And because you've not had a love for the love of the truth, God said this. This is God's doing. I, God, will turn you over to the strong delusion. I'll turn you over to the lie. And you're going to believe that lie and you're going to think that lie is so real. And the reason so many are under the delusion is because they have hated full-time following, walking with God discipleship. They've not had a love for the love of the truth. And so it's God himself. When God turns you over to a delusion, buddy, you ain't going back. If you're saved, you're going to be ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ because you're going to be released from that delusion. You're going to be staring at the face of truth, Jesus Christ, and you're going to know the kind of shabby life you have lived. Filth, selfishness. Many Christians are going to go through that one. Jonathan says, amen, watching that with 99% of people these days. Christians, 99% of Christians, so-called. Amen. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. And especially all these people who are cool with homosexuality, that's what this passage is referring to. That, that is the final stage of a reprobate mind is when you're cool with homosexuality. Oh, my uncle's gay and he's pretty cool. God hates him and going to throw him in hell. Unless he becomes a believer in the finished work of Jesus Christ and quits glorifying Sodom. God doesn't do the glorification of Sodom, of San Francisco, of New York, of Tel Aviv. God hates it with a passion. Christians love Vegas. They love all these other cities. Let's go to Nashville. Let's go to Miami. Let's go to Houston. Let's go to Seattle. Let's go down to San Diego. Let, let's go to Montreal. Let, and ain't nobody thinking about the golden city on a high. J Jesus, the new Jerusalem. Nobody. Nobody wants to go. They don't want to go for the next 20 years or 30. And all we should be thinking about is heaven. Heaven, heaven, heaven. We are citizens of heaven. We are bigger than that. We're ambassadors of heaven. We have been sent here to earth, this filthy place, to represent heaven and have heaven on our mind at all times because heaven's king is our love, our desire, our heart. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Clay says, Clay's a photographer. He says, I just photographed a gay wedding. It's been a curse to my business. Yeah, it is. It is. God hates it with a passion, man. You know, and they force us. You got to make a wedding cake and you got to take their pictures. And no, we don't. You, you take the punishment. You take the persecution. Because blessed are you when men shall revile you, persecute you, and just do you bad and say all manner of evil against you. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. You're in good company. Blessed are ye. 
And that's what we do. I've prayed over and over. Hey, God's cool, bro. He, he, he takes care of that. He died for that too. Amen. And, and the beautiful thing about life is we grow in wisdom and we don't, you don't have to take that to heaven with you. You say, okay, Lord. Yeah. And that's when we repent, guys. What is repentance? When, when God repented that he created man, did he have to turn away from his sin? No, because God doesn't have sin. So repentance means something different than turning away from sin. Yeah. Repentance means getting your mind right with God, believing as he has said it. That's repentance. Repentance is quit living like the world. Repentance is having a hatred for Marvel Comics, understanding how demonic and satanic it is. Repentance is hating Disney beyond hatred, praying for their destruction, praying that God will slice their faces off. That, that's getting right with God when you hate Disney that bad and Marvel Comics that bad and all the movies that bad. When, when you love God, you're going to hate evil. That's what he said. I, I'm not making this up. That's what he said. And the Christian church doesn't do that because they're under a strong delusion because they do not have a love for the love of the truth. They love themselves. They love their script. They love what they going on. They, they bucket list. Hey, God, tonight, I think it might be tonight's going to upset everybody's bucket list. He's going to dump your bucket, retard. Amen. You better get saved. You better believe God's way, man. Amen. So th we're looking at this code from back there on June 13th, 2023. And God tells us the key to the sealed secret is in the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And Pentecost. Passover and Pentecost. And when they apex, there's your rapture. Boom. Uh, the man of fire, Mitchell, he breaks it and it reveals the miraculous sign. Four. Four, that's the fourth candle. That's Pentecost. Four, that's Jesus, the fourth man in the flame. The door is the fourth letter of the Jewish alphabet. Hebrew alphabet, Dalit, the door. Jesus is that. I am the door. Amen? Boom. The man who prophesied in the eighth year of his code research, that's when he made this code, was in his eighth year. He's now in his tenth year. Praise God. God specifies. This is when he discovered that, but we didn't understand it. Ain't it great? Hey, guys, discovery ain't the same thing as understanding. And understanding ain't the same thing as wisdom. You grow in it. You learn in it. You take the next step. You don't quit. God don't give two red cents for quitters, man. He can't stand a quitter. You keep on going. I didn't understand. What didn't I get here? What didn't I understand here? You keep on going. I got to give you understanding. You pray for wisdom. You pray for knowledge. And he'll reveal it to you. And he told us right here, he said, he sealed the secret in the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Feast of Weeks. Dun, dun, dun. That's right now. You're in the middle of that right now. Apex and all those other things we've said too. The locusts and everything else that's going on in the world. Right on. Praise God. The man who prophesied in the eighth year of his code research is the lampstand. Sean's the guy, guys. Quit hating that. He, he, ain't, he ain't making himself that. You and I are reading it. It's in the God's Bible codes. Okay? And it took him a while to understand that he was Moses. Praise the Lord. All right, uh, Exodus 3, 4. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, that was Moses looking at the burning bush that wasn't burning, wasn't being consumed. God called out to him in the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Here am I. Uh, Deuteronomy 16. Look at that, Deuteronomy 16, 15 and 17. Seven days shall thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God, the place with the, the Lord shall choose, that's Jerusalem. They didn't know it on this side, on the Deuteronomy side, because Moses hadn't died yet. They were still over here on the other side of, of the land with Jericho just across the river. Okay? So they were here still on this side, and they didn't know where God was going to name his place. But God said, you know, progressive revelation? Always through the Bible. Even right here, Deuteronomy. Jesus' favorite book. God tells him, he says, I got a place here in the future that I'm going to place my name. And when I place my name there, that's where I want you to go. God already knew where that place was. He didn't tell them because it wasn't time for it to be revealed. He kept it locked and secreted, sealed until it was ready for them to know it. Um, uh, you're going to go there every year, seven days where the Lord shall choose. 
because the Lord thy God shall bless you in all your increase and the works of your hands. Therefore shalt thou uh, surely rejoice. Three times in the year shall all the males appear before the Lord. Harvest seasons, harvest festivals. That God loves the harvest, harvest, harvest. And that was Passover, Pentecost, and um, Tabernacles. Okay? The first feast, the fourth feast, the middle feast, and the last feast. Dun, dun, dun. Are we tracking? Of the seven, you come, all the men are required to come three times a year to Jerusalem. We now know where the Lord placed his name. And that's why he's about to call us away because they want to take his city from him. And they think they will have for, you know, three and a half years. And Jesus is going to come back and get his city back. He's going to burn it to the ground because he hates the modern day city. He's all about the new Jerusalem, not this old filthy thing from Jebus. It used to be called Jebus before it was called Salem. And then it became Salem and now it's Jerusalem. Amen. And he says, continues, three times in a year shall your males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, Jerusalem. In the feast of unleavened bread, the feast of weeks, which is Pentecost. And that's today, guys. Day number two of counting the Omer and day seven of Passover. The day the Egyptians were drowned in the walls of water. It also happens on God's calendar. This is a weird thing that it happens to be Adar 7, Moses' birthday and death. I mean, is that coinky dink or is that God at work pointing things out, triangulating proofs? Many infallible proofs. And the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall appear before the Lord. Do not come empty. Every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord. All right, let's look at that next one. I gave her three to look at. Let's look at them. Bam. All right. Got that first one. Now we'll look at the second one. Because the second one and the third one go together. It's a, it's a two-part code. All right? This was the second part on April 25th, and the first part was April 22nd. We'll do that next. And what does Sean say, man? Let's see here. Let me click on the picture and make it bigger. Oh, now we're going to have a freeze up. Okay. Sean says this. This is his commentary. April 25th, 2022. Every sentence of this 96-letter code has multiple verses passing through it. I mean, the whole table. You can see how long the table is, and every one of those lines going this way are regular plain text verses. And there's a bunch of them. He says, uh, so it's, and it's related to the meaning of this code. Sean says, I isolated all the relevant verses at each position throughout the code. This is an incredible witness. Glory to God. And then you'll see that link there for the next one we're going to. All right. God's word in his dialect. Here he stands. The water of God is a gift. A feast gift. Now we know that the water of God happens at the Feast of Tabernacles. And we just talked about that here when we went through the Feast of Tabernacles. And John, in the book of John, Jesus claims to be the bread of life and he claims to be the water of life right here at the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? And so... So come again to the water of my father, the abundant words of the prince for the daily food. Accept it now. Believe it now. Surely it's fire. The, the bread of life, the word of God. Okay, this is our daily bread. And it needs to become our sustenance. We need to love the plain text. 10 to 20 chapters every day. And we need to love the Bible codes. This is fresh fire, fresh bread, fresh water from God. Come here and be filled. And love truth, guys. Love truth, love truth. We're about to be raptured tonight. I have... Why wouldn't we be? All Everything's pointing to it. I'm going to look in faith. Amen? And that's why we're going to meet together at midnight, those of you that can meet with us. And we just may not even, we may go off the air without ever going off the air. We may go up in the air before we're off the air. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? All right. So it says, uh, the words of the prince for the daily food. Accept it now. Surely it's fire. Now her bread is judgment. What? You and I were being sustained by bread. And now it's become judgment. Surely it's a fire. Now her bread is judgment. So from the stem of Jesse, Jesse 
is the stem like the menorah. And from Jesse came Obed. Obed beget Jesse. Obed, Jesse, David. Okay, then comes David and then all the way down to Jesus. Okay. And so the stem of Jesse, the root of Jesse, is the menorah, the main menorah kind of branch. And then from him, his family tree came. And Jesus is in that family tree via David. Jesse begat David, the seventh son. Amen. And then Jesus came from him, the son of David. So from the stem of Jesse become light for me. That's the menorah. That's the light. That's the, you know, the family tree, the olive tree, the branch menorah. So from the stem of Jesse become light for me. I will fulfill the feast. This is God talking, right? His witness was driven away and the day. Now, let's read Psalm 107, 17 and 18. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, you know, water and bread. And they draw near unto the gates of death. The water of God is a gift, a feast. That's tabernacle. We found out also it's unleavened bread because God's going to destroy the world with a flood. They refuse the sweet, life-sustaining water of God, so he's going to bring a torrential storm of water, a flood of water, a tsunami of destruction. And you and I are going to rejoice at the water. It's a blessing to us. It is a wonderful blessing for us because we're on the boat and we get to go to heaven through that water. Prison food is bread and water. That sounds like an awful thing. Unless you're starving to death, bread and water will sustain you. And while we walked this earth and we were bleeding and we were working and our joints were tired and we were wore out and we had to keep on walking, keep on working, that bread and water sustained us. And it was a blessing from the Lord. And because we walked in him, the menorah, the main stand, Jesus Christ, and we understood him and saw him at every feast, unleavened bread and tabernacles. And the tabernacles he was calling out and come receive this water of life freely and be sustained and refreshed. And those of us that did have been sustained and refreshed. And those of them that didn't, they about to see the waters of unleavened bread. You don't read that anywhere hardly, but they about to get the waters of unleavened bread. The waters of the curse because they refused the blessing. And we're right here at all of this. Unleavened bread, a water event, because they refused the water of life. Now they're facing the waters of death. We're going to encourage you to just place your faith in Jesus Christ and believe. All right, let's get on to the next one. Click, click that link there. Heather's got up the link. And this will take us to the one previous from April 22nd, 2022. Sean continues, he starts here, he says, the two-part code, this two-part code contains an astonishing 96 letters flow in opposite directions. This encoded message is a clear call for Israel to repent and to turn to Jesus Christ. Believe properly. Don't believe the Talmud. Don't believe Kabbalah. Believe Jesus and the Torah and the, the whole Bible, the Tanakh, the New Testament. You can't believe in Jesus, repent, and turn to him without reading the book of Matthew. And in the book of Matthew, you'll find out that Jesus was an awesome Jew who went to synagogue. He went to temple. He read Torah. He read Isaiah. He opened up the scroll and knew right where to go on his very, very first day of ministry. Isaiah 61. He didn't have what you and I have. He rolled to the section, the Bible says, where it would be. He knew right where to find it. He was familiar with the scriptures. Familiar with the scrolls. Believe Jesus Christ, who is their only hope of salvation. If they refuse to listen to God's word and heed his warning, this might be your very last chance, guys. And even you Christians, you people who call yourself Christian, who won't believe in once saved, always saved, this very well may be your last chance. And if you won't believe God's way like a child, that Jesus has done it all, and you just place your faith there, once saved, always saved, in belief, faith only, faith alone, in Jesus Christ of Nazareth alone, if you won't heed, you very well may be left behind tonight. And if you live on the East Coast, you very well may end up in hell tonight calling yourself a Christian. Because you have refused the beloved gift, the free gift of Jesus Christ. It's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. It is not a wage. You don't 
earn salvation. You are offered freely salvation. You're either going to reach out there and believe it or you're not. You may want to turn it into a wage and you're going to hate that. Come maybe tonight. The Lord raptures us, his true bride tonight. You better heed. You better repent. You turn to Jesus because of the soon coming judgment of Daniel's 70th week to Israel and the whole world is the bread of affliction when it could have been the bread of life. You refuse the bread of life, you're about to get the bread of affliction. Jail food, prison food, judgment food. Don't, don't have that, man. Oh, taste and see that the Lord's good. Remember his death till he comes. The bread, unleavened bread, and the wine. And the water of affliction. The bread of affliction and the water of affliction. That is this tsunami event. The tsunami event is the water of affliction, and it's going to take out your bread supply. Please repent, turn to the Lord, heed his word, and believe. Simply believe and receive this free gift. Jesus Christ is standing like a rock, offering the free gift of the living bread, the living water. Accept his free gift of salvation by faith alone. And do it now before it's too late. Now, I mean, now means now, right now. The time is here. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth in me shall never thirst. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. We're reading Deuteronomy 16.3. And he's talking about the feast of unleavened bread where we are right now. Thou shalt not eat any leaven with the bread. And that pictures Jesus' body. Leaven is always a picture of sin in the Bible. A little leaven will make the whole loaf swell. The whole batch of bread swell just a little bit of yeast. And a little bit of sin will destroy a life. Jesus had none in him. No sin at all. Amen. And so, uh, that's what we're reading right here in the Deuteronomy passage. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it, no leaven in your bread. Seven days you're going to eat it. We're right now in the middle of unleavened bread, guys. Therewith. And the bread of affliction... For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that you may remember the day that you came out of the land of Egypt, you know, and God saved you, and he preserved your life. Okay? This ain't some fancy bread. We're not at the Italian restaurant dipping our bread up in the olive oil and pepper and lemon and all that jazz. This is the bread of affliction, man, just to keep me alive. I, I need this unleavened bread. And they were in such a hurry, they didn't grab their leaven. They just grabbed their stalks of wheat and barley, and let's go. And then they made their breads out there when they set up camp. And it was unleavened bread without leaven. The bread of affliction, but it kept them alive. Water and bread will keep you alive in prison. And that's what this was. And then God fed them manna, angel's food. And they still hated that. God gave them a wonderful upgrade and they hated it. So God's telling them right here, he says, um, that you always remember the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is what it comes down to. Remember that you were saved from Egypt. 1 Kings 22, 27, and say, Thus says the Lord, put this fellow into prison and feed him with the bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I come in peace. It's coming, guys. The bread of affliction and the water of affliction. That water of affliction is going to be a one mile high tidal wave coming at 600 miles an hour and it's going to kill everybody in its path. I mean, in beyond devastation. And then the aftermath as it's settling filled with radiation, filled with death, and so many people continuing to die every day from their injuries who didn't die immediately. Day after day after day, the blood sacrifice of the devil. Beltane. We're in Beltane right now. Beltane today, tomorrow, and Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Keep your eyes open. Jesus Christ is coming, and they're going to rejoice over the work of their hands. Look what our weapons did. Oh, man. This is God's tidal wave. This is God doing this, using these fools to do it. His judgment, his water of affliction, his bread of affliction. Amen? All right. Let's go on down to the translation. God's word in his dialect. Here it is. Code by Sean Mitchell. That makes it official. That makes it part of the canon of God, part of the seven thunders, part of the ephod, part of the fire of God, via God's lampstand, Sean Mitchell. Here's what it says. Here he stands. The water of God is a gift, a feast gift. 
So come again to the water. And my father, this is Jesus, 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 come right now while he's coming to you as a drinking fountain to sustain you from that hot, hot, hot day of living life here and that cool water refreshing you. Come to him while it's that. Because there's coming a water on a feast day right now, Feast of Unleavened Bread, Feast of Pentecost, that's going to destroy everybody. And to you and I who have tasted and seen that the Lord's good, those of you and I who have enjoyed the water fountain of the refreshment of our Lord Jesus Christ on a daily basis, reading his word and prayer and communicating with him, that's what having friends over for dinner is all about, eating and drinking and fellowshipping. And that's what the word of God's all about. Jesus is this bread. Jesus is this water. And we have enjoyed the sustenance. We have enjoyed the fellowship. We have enjoyed the refreshment of Jesus Christ because we're believers. And these people who have refused him is about to get the water of a different event, a water of unleavened bread, a raging water, a raging water of God's wrath, who have refused the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, who've refused to drink of the water of life freely, who've refused to come to the bread. Oh, that looks like bread of affliction. You just wait. You just wait. And it might be tonight. It's unleavened bread. It is Pentecost. It's all these other things. Adar 7, seventh day of Passover. All these things are just coming together. And you and I are going to be praising God again for this wonderful water because it's going to lift us up on Noah's boat, the gentle boat, the gentle barn of God. And he's going to gently lift us up, glorify us in the clouds, and walk us right through the glory door while we're glorified just like his body. We'll have our new bodies and everything. It's still going to be a joy to us, this raging water of unleavened bread that you just don't hear about other than the Bible code. And here it comes, and it's still going to be a feast to us. It's still going to be rejoicing. So come again to the water. And my father, the abundant words of the prince are for daily food. Accept it now. Surely it's fire. Now her bread is judgment. So from the stem of Jesse, become light for me. I will fulfill the feast. He's going to fulfill the feast of tabernacles with the gentle water. And he's going to fulfill this feast, maybe tonight, of unleavened bread with the raging water. And you and I will be lifted up like Noah. Bible code calls Sean Noah, calls him Jonah, calls him Elijah, calls him Moses. Yesterday's Bible code had Moses, Elijah, and Jonah in the middle. All that. Believe, guys, manna is angel food that they ate and they complained about it, Brent. They hated it. And that made God so mad. So, guys, be saved. Know that you're saved right now God's way. Put off your works, put off your actions, put off your religiosity. God hates religion. He wants you to believe his Bible. Believe and be saved. Come to the water of life freely and drink of the fountain and the sus sustaining beauty of Jesus and his presence in your life. The word of God, the Bible, Jesus is that fresh bread. Soon coming maybe tonight is the bread of affliction. We're looking, we're, we're looking seriously in faith. So much so that we'll be back here at midnight. We'll be back here at midnight, Central Standard Time, to do a watch night service. And we're going to be looking for Jesus to come get us. We're going to be looking for that water of destruction, the water of unleavened bread that is not talked about too much. And here it comes, the raging water, because people refuse the blessed water. We invite you to the water. Come. Come to the water of life freely. Come. Drink. Come to know Jesus. Believe, believe, believe. Be saved or be killed. Be saved and go with us on the gentle ride of the gentle barn to, this, to the heavens or be stuck here on earth for the next seven years. Hell on earth. And every day will get worse and worse and worse if you survive the first one. We pray for you. We want you saved. We want everybody saved. Even my enemies, you guys that hate me and make fun, I love you, man. I love you. I don't want you to die. I don't want you to be left behind. I want you saved. I want you to believe. Will you please believe? Satan gives them Pizza Hut and Coke to wash it down, and they love it. Good point, bro. Corn syrup and death. GMOs. 
The veggies ain't veggies. They look like veggies. The meat ain't meat. It looks like meat, tastes like meat, but it ain't. They're eating death. Waiting for our blessed hope, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Me too. Hey, let's be back here at midnight. Let's pray. Oh, Jesus Christ, we love you. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for these Bible codes. Thank you for your wonderful word. Thank you for being the key to it all and unlocking it for us so we would know your heart and mind. Your ways are past finding out. There's no way we could know any of this unless you just flat out told us. And we're so thankful you flat out told us. Thank you. I pray that others will believe it. I pray that people will place their faith in you and be saved so they can rise above these torrential waters that are coming in maybe tonight. And we just look to you. We look to you this whole next couple, three days to see what you're going to do. And we pray. We have faith that you're going to come get us. you are got to come get us sometime. There has to be a morning days for Moses somehow and so many days. And you know what that is. Please reveal that to us. We know we're right here at the end. Right here at the end. We praise you for that. And I pray for everyone here that you'll bless us in blessed hope in our spirit. Revive our spirit. Renew our hearts. Make our hearts just flitter and flutter at the thoughts of your coming to get us. And joy, 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 may it be ours. And may we walk in it. You've already given it to us. It's a fruit of your spirit, man. May we walk with your spirit to have this joy. Read that Bible. And uh, I pray for all the naysayers and all the scoffers that you'll put it to them. That you'll put it to them the night of your rapture if they won't believe. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Asking for prayer after this teaching, um, bundled up and walking. I hate the cold. And I had to because of physical challenges, emotional challenges that are super difficult and extremely struggle. So we'll pray for you. I can't read past that, but I'll open it up later and we'll see it. George says, Amen, Maranatha. Amen, Maranatha, man. Amen. God bless. In Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Father for leaving the 90 and 9 to save us. All my brothers and sisters present, we glorify you. We adore you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, says Tyvon. Amen. Donna says, Maranatha, Lord Jesus, come get us. Amen. See you tonight, says Josh. Jenny says, Amen. Gordy, amen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. That is going to be midnight central. We'll start on the East Coast. 1 a.m. East Coast, midnight central, 11 Mountain, and 10 Pacific. Amen. God bless you guys. I love you all. GTG. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Meet at 12. Amen, George. Love you, buddy. I love all y'all. God bless, and we'll see you then.